Hey everyone, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new to my channel and you like DIYs on a budget, Dollar Tree DIYs and just DIYs in general, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around because I do a lot of that here on this channel. And also, don't forget to hit the bell and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. So today's project is a decor piece that can be used year round and of course today I'm kind of making it for spring but I love this project because it can be changed up very easily and it can be used all year long. And I'm going to show you several variations of it so that you can make it to fit your decor style. So let's not wait any longer, let's jump in and get started. For this project I will be using one of these garden fence pieces from Dollar Tree. And I'll be using two of these small wooden crates. These are the ones that kind of look like fruit crates. They're a little bit taller and deeper and a little bit longer than some of the others that they have. I will also be using some chalk paint by Waverly in the color ivory. And I'll be using some black craft paint and also some dark brown craft paint. And you can pick these up at Walmart, at Dollar Tree, or any craft store. I will also be using some E6000 and my hot glue gun and glue sticks. And for the spring part of this project, I'll be using some spring florals from Dollar Tree. First I'm going to remove the labels off of the bottom of these crates and then I'm going to decide uh, which way I want to glue them together because sometimes they don't fit real flush together end to end. Um, as you can see here there's a little bit of a gap so if I turn them around they fit much nicer so that's the way I'm going to be gluing them together. Then I'm going to add some E6000 and this is being really stubborn so here's a little hack for you if you get the jar lid openers from Dollar Tree they are amazing they will help you get lids off for your craft items and also things in the kitchen. So I'm adding some E6000 and then a little bit of hot glue so that it will stick together right away and I can keep working on this project while the E6000 is drying. And if there are any rough edges or splintery areas, just take some sandpaper or a sanding block and smooth those out. So next I'm going to paint my little box and I am using the brown craft paint and I'm going to water it down to make a stain so it kind of mimics a stain. Um, this is just uh, not quite as messy and a little bit easier to do so um, that's why I'm doing it this way instead of just using a stain and um, you can kind of adjust uh, how light or dark you want this by how much water you add to it and also um, you can do several coats if you want it to be darker. I'm going for a little bit lighter stain here and so I kind of test it on the bottom of the box first and then kind of figure out exactly how I want it. Then I'm just going to go over the entire box with this paint. And actually I did all of the box except for the inside of it. You could do the inside if you want to. I knew that it wasn't going to show once I put my florals in it so I did not worry about staining the inside of the box. While my paint is drying on my box I'm going to cut down my fence piece and I'm going to basically just be cutting it in half. 
Now, you could try using scissors for this, but I found that it's pretty difficult to use scissors, so I'm using a pair of wire cutters here, and that works pretty well. You do have to be a little bit careful because it does want to kind of snap, and you don't want to break it where you don't want it to be broken, but um, just be careful, and I would recommend wearing some protective eyewear for this because some of those little pieces can just like go flying, and you want to protect your eyes. I will also be trimming off those little connector parts on the one side of the fence. However, I will be keeping those stakes that are at the bottom of the fence because I'm going to be using that as part of what I glue my box to. However, the stake on the one side is a little bit too wide and so I'm just trimming that down to make it the exact width of my box. So now I'm going to paint my fence piece with the ivory chalk paint and I'm using just a old bristle brush for this and I will be putting two coats of paint on this and uh, just working it in on the edges. Uh, you have to kind of turn your piece uh, different directions to make sure you're getting all of it covered but um, it covers pretty easily and then uh, I am leaving the strip across the bottom and the two stakes without any paint so that my glue will adhere uh, better to the box um, when I put the two pieces together. And if you watched my videos where I made the wall medallion out of these fence pieces or the heart wall decor piece, uh, you know that uh, flipping the piece over and painting the edges from the back side really works best for this and it's pretty easy to do. Um, I will put the links to those videos in the description box below and you can check those out after you watch this video. Then I'm going back with my paintbrush on the front side and just cleaning up any drips or excess paint. Once the paint on the fence is dry, I'm going to take my sanding block, a piece of sandpaper, and just go over lightly in a few places and remove a little bit of the paint so that the dark color shows through just to give it a little bit of a distressed look. So I only picked up two of these boxes at Dollar Tree, but I did want to show you some other possibilities than just staining the box and doing the white fence piece. So I decided to just take one side of my stained box and I'm painting it with the white chalk paint so that I can show you uh, some different variations. Obviously you wouldn't do this step if you were wanting to just have the wood stained box, but if you do want to paint your boxes, you can paint them in any color and you just want to paint the whole thing with whatever color you choose. Also, instead of painting your fence piece with the white or ivory chalk paint, you could make it a black, so it's more of a black wrought iron look. Now, the fence pieces at Dollar Tree are not black, even though it looks like it here. They're more of a charcoal gray. And so I'm taking some black paint and I am kind of just dry brushing over the top of this. I'm not actually painting it a solid black. I do want some of that gray to show through so it looks a little bit more uh, natural and like real wrought iron. Okay, so now back to my original project. I am going to need to trim off those stakes on the bottom of the garden fence piece because they are a little bit too long so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just figuring out where I need to trim them and then snipping them off with the wire cutters. So let me show you a few of the variations. This is the stained box with the ivory colored fence or you could do the ivory fence and an ivory box which I think is a very pretty look or you could use the black 
iron looking fence and put the white box with this or this would be pretty to do a black box with or I think it looks nice with the stained looking box too. Let me know in the comments which combination you like the best. I apologize that I didn't have it on camera but I just glued the fence piece to the back of the wooden box once I decided which combination I wanted and now I'm just taking some florals from Dollar Tree and arranging them in the box and this is what I love about this project you can use this all year long because you can just change up the florals that you put in it and you could even put moss and succulents in it you could put fall florals or Christmas or um, just any kind of floral arrangement in this to change it up and make it uh, different for all of the seasons of the year and I think this would be an amazing gift for Mother's Day. In fact, I'm thinking that this might be what my mother is going to get for Mother's Day. And it's safe for me to say that because my mom doesn't have the internet. So if you know my mom, you're sworn to secrecy. I also like that this can sit on a table or a shelf or it can be hung up on the wall and it's very lightweight. To make a hanger, I just took a piece of jute twine and folded it over, tied a knot, and then just hot glued it to the back of the fence piece, and it hangs up really well. Like I said, it's really lightweight, and so it works really well. Here's what it looks like with the black fence piece, and I really like this too. I hope you like this project. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for more DIY projects to come. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.